then <laughs> it walked away. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, thanks a lot. No, thank you. Okay, Steelers with a big win over the Browns, 33-18. With me to talk about it now is Donnie Druin. He is at Donnie Druin on Twitter. He is a writer for a Steel Still Curtain blog, um, also NFL Spin Zone, and part of the Pylon to Pylon podcast. How are you doing, sir? Man, I'm doing great after a big Steelers win. Uh, it's been a really relaxing Sunday. Got some pizza and wings inside of my tummy, so I, I, I can't complain, man. It's been a good day so far. What, what kind of topping we talk about on the pizza? Uh, you know, I just went with regular pepperoni. Uh, it was just a, uh, a deal for one large topping uh, pizza and 26 wings for uh, $26, so definitely couldn't pass that up. What are your thoughts on pineapple on pizza? I, uh, you know, <laughs> the only times I've had pineapple on pizza has been just like regular, like throw it in the oven kind of pizzas. Uh, yeah. Doughs haven't been very good, uh, so I'm not the biggest fan of pineapple on pizza. But okay. I, I do see people with like uh, different taste buds, and you know, it does offer that little uh, that complement to the sweet pizza taste. No, they're wrong. They're wrong. Pineapple on yeah. pizza is stupid. <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's if, official. If, if you're putting a gun to my head. And you're making yeah. me choose. I'll definitely yeah, have this, to go with no, no pineapple. But this was almost the shortest podcast segment in history. If you answered the wrong way, just so you know, so you answered correctly. <laughs> I'm happy with this. What about what about wings? What what kind of what what, what what do you like on your wings? All right, so I'm a complete baby whenever it comes to my wings. I don't like anything hot. Like the absolute most I can take are just like mild wings, maybe medium. So I'm definitely a barbecue kind of guy, and I do like lemon pepper wings as well. I am – I'm with you. I really don't like hot. Sometimes I try like hot barbecue and then I regret it every time. It's like, oh, man, why why can't I remember that I hate this? Yeah, I, uh, I tried a mango habanero wing once in my life and I think it came out faster than it went back in. So I, I definitely cut myself off after I said no. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a barbecue kind of guy. <laughs> so before we talk about – the game i think we should talk about what happened this weekend with uh, the shooting in squirrel hill and just the such a horrific thing but the the response of the community and the, and the world uh in in support of um squirrel hill and pittsburgh and kind of what what sports teams uh how how they could help with that yeah, I, I think that's the the best uh, one of the best qualities about Pittsburgh is that you know we we as a city almost function like a sports team in itself. I, I believe the mayor actually said that uh, afterwards. But yeah. nah, you know to to have such a terrible thing like that happen and to be able to come together with your friends and family and turn the Steelers game on or you know go watch the Penguins play at you know console energy. Sorry, Pittsburgh Paints Arena. I forgot about that. Uh, you know, it's it's just a sports are already such a big part of our lives, and you know, we go through so many ups and downs with these teams, and you know, it, it's just good to have a, a team like the Steelers go out and get a win today to kind of uh, boost everybody's spirits. And you know, at, at the end of the day, I think we're all going to be okay, and the Steelers definitely helped uh, reiterate that today. Yeah, yeah. Um, all day yesterday and this morning, I was just really down and really sad and you know I, I thought it's like why why do i even want to have a podcast do i even want to talk about anything and but yeah. what things like you know the penguins played last night uh you know the steelers today and they provide a, a a nice diversion a nice you know just just something else to think about and uh, you know i heard some the, the coach i think the coach i think tomlin I heard he only lives like like a block and a half from from where that happened, and some really? of the players live near there. And you know they were they were getting pretty emotional about it. So, you know it's it's you know it it weighed heavily on their minds, and um, it was nice that you know you you know it doesn't you know sports sports only means so much in the grand scheme of things, but you know for for it's a nice diversion, nice entertainment to think about something else instead of. Uh, all the terrible things in the world. So, yeah, Steelers come out with a big one, but it didn't start out so great. Um, the offense really sputtered in the beginning. Um, 
<laughs> were you were you worried at, at Cleveland? Cleveland uh, was looking kind of okay. They kept uh, getting field goals, but were you worried early on? You know, <laughs> I I just feel like it's the same thing every week with this team. Just a slow start. And then they finally find their footing in the second or third quarter and they just take off. But, you know, given their history with Cleveland and, you know, with really any team in the first quarter, you always kind of hold your breath, don't you? You know, the, you know, Browns drive right down the field, kick a field goal, you know, Steelers go three and out. And you think, you know, here we go again. <laughs> you know, the same old stuff. But I worried. I, I don't think for the final outcome of the game, I was extremely worried. Uh just the Steelers are on a different level than the Browns at this point in the season compared to week one. But uh, the so starts definitely do need to get better. I'm not expecting touchdowns, uh, you know, the first two or three straight drives for the Steelers. But, it, you know, the play calling needs to be better. Players need to come out the gate with a little bit more oomph in their step. You know, if they want to, you know, compete with the, the Patriots, you know, the Jaguars and the Chiefs of the division, you know. Exactly. It's it At some point, it's going to hurt them, you know, and what I don't get is usually a, an offense has their first, I don't know, first number of plays scripted. So how are you coming up with these lousy scripts every, every time? Well, that, that might be exactly it. Uh, you know, they might just be sticking straight to the script and, you know, in, in terms of a, uh, a game long thing, that's good, I guess. But you know, at some point, you might want to throw the script out the window if you got yourself a chance to go and score points. Well, that's a good point. Like, yeah, you know, if you see something, yeah, if you see something that you can exploit, yeah, just throw the script out the window. Just, you yeah. know, just just go with that. So, yeah, I mean, it's something something they need to uh, definitely work on. And I, and I heard them I heard them talk about it. it's like, yeah, we need to come up with a, come up with a better start. It's like, well, yeah, you still need to work on that. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, talking is only good to do it justice. And it's not just one person's fault. You know, we can talk about play calling all we want. But, you know, Ben, again, you know, he's off to a slow start in the game. Uh, the interception, you know, was almost like, I don't want to call it like a boneheaded throw. But, you know, he had no business throwing that ball, you know, in between Juju Smith-Schuster and that Browns defensive back. And, you know, we could point to a couple of other different plays where we kind of scratched our heads and going, hey, you know, what's Ben thinking? So I, I yeah. think all around they could definitely do better at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, but Ben did get it going. At least uh, it, 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 all that got erased with a nice long touchdown to Antonio Brown, and then and then, and then that made it seven to six. And then like like almost ever since then, Cleveland did not get a whole lot going on uh, in their offense, and the Steelers' offense really got going with James Conner. Uh, <laughs> How, how do you think he did today? Uh, he did phenomenal. Uh, it's just another week of, hey, no Le'Veon Bell, no problem. And, you know, I, I hate to be the guy that keeps bringing him up, but he, he's just done such a phenomenal job stepping inside of his role. Uh, it, even the broadcasters today, Ian Eagle and Dan Fouts, they were talking about how it, it feels like the Steelers have almost moved on completely from Bell. And, and it feels like James Conner has been the guy since day one, regardless of any other running back going. But, no, he's – Improved phenomenally in pass catching. Uh, they refer to him as a really nice blocker in pass protection. Uh, he's definitely a guy who could do it all, and he proved that again once today. He seems to be getting better at pass catching, and at this point, you got to say, how is he worse than Le'Veon Bell? Because he he runs just as hard. Uh, he catches passes. He does everything. So, what's how is he how is he worse than uh, Le'Veon Bell again? Because because uh, it sounds like he's uh, he's just as good, right? In, in terms of production, he is just as good. And you know, at the end of the day, that's what matters. I, I do think Le'Veon is you know the overall better running back just because he's had a handful of years in the league and he's been able to fine tune and perfect his craft. But I mean, we're in year two of James Conner and we're getting this. I mean, how can the Steelers not be excited about him moving forward if he's only going to get better? Exactly. Yeah. But it's really curious. I mean, what are we in? Game game seven. We still have nine games to go. At some point soon, in theory, Le'Veon Bell is going to come back. And at some point, I, I wouldn't expect him to be in, in perfect shape you know, coming in, but eventually he is going to get in football shape. And then 
how is that going to look? Are they going to split it 50-50? Or is it going to be mostly James Conner? Is it going to be mostly Le'Veon Bell? Or uh, that that could be that could be awesome or it could be a disaster. Yeah, you know, at least on the outside, James Conner and Le'Veon Bell have a finer relationship just from everything Conner has said. And, you know, if, if you're like me and you like to scour players' uh, social media, you know, he, he's liked a couple of things about James Conner on Twitter. But, you know, even Ben's abdicated for James Conner. He's still getting touches whenever Le'Veon comes back. And, you know, if the Steelers are concerned about Le'Veon Bell's health or, you know, his shape, you know, why not run a, a two-headed monster backfield like that? Uh, you know, why not have both of them on the field at the same time since Le'Veon's so good as a route runner? You know, uh, you know they really need to get creative, you know, if and when Le'Veon does come back. If Le'Veon Bell is, and they have lined Le'Veon Bell up at wide receiver in the past, that's that's an issue right now. James Washington was a healthy scratch. So his, I think we could say that well, at least at this point, that he's not going to contribute much. And, you know, and what was it? It was Justin Hunter in today. Yeah. So if you want another wide receiver, and I'm saying, I'm not saying use him to, um, exclusively at wide receiver, but yeah, why not put them both in there? And, um, yeah. And then, and then see how that goes. So that could be, a that has a potential to really help the Steelers, but it also has a potential to be a major disaster. So, We'll we'll see how that goes. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, James Conner had 146 yards rushing with two rushing touchdowns, but he also had 66 yards pat, uh, receiving. So it's you know he just uh, he is he is on top of his game right now. He certainly is, yeah. And with uh, with Conner's ex- you know excelled play, we can also talk about the offensive line. I think they've answered the bell. And they've done just fine, uh, especially with Marcus Gilbert being out. Uh, I think the the whole unit played really well today. I know Ben got sacked early on in the game, but you know after Ben hit the ground, I thought they did a really good job, both in pass protection and run blocking as well. So it looks like they uh, got the message from Tomlin, and it looks like they're responding well. So true. The offensive line did excellent. They gave up that one sack to Miles Garrett. And that, and, you know, I was I was talking to somebody, and I'm just like, you know, show me a tackle who's going to block Miles Garrett and hold them the one sack the whole game. I'm I, admittedly so. I'm not Villanova's biggest fan, but you know, if you can limit Miles Garrett to one sack, that that's a compliment to any offensive line. That's that's huge. He did he did nothing the rest of the game, and yeah, some of the holes that offensive line was opening up for James Conner were, I think. Uh, I think I could have I could have rushed for mm. I, <laughs> I think I could have had yeah, you I think can. I could have had 75 yards today with some with some of those holes. Well, okay, maybe 7.5 yards, but still. Um yeah, yeah, the offensive line look were just did great and you're right. They they you know, they didn't have their uh their regular all the regular guys. So, um very impressive uh for them. And the Steelers defense was pretty impressive too. Um, they, I, I think their philosophy was just go after Mayfield, and it worked pretty well. And I mean, some of those, some of those times, they they almost got him, but Baker Mayfield was able to you know run away or, or make a play or something like that. But for the most part, they were uh, they kept him under a lot of pressure. Yeah, I was about to say, as good as the offense was today, putting up 33 points, I was more impressed with defense and uh, you know, just the opportunities that were presented to them and how they responded. Uh, after the whole Ryan Switzer debacle on special teams, which wasn't his fault. I'm not putting that on him, even though he should have tried to go recover it. Um, it, it took the Browns how many plays to score at the one-yard line? You know, after penalty, oh, after oh. penalty was called. The, the, refs, the refs were really rooting for the Browns on that drive. <laughs> it, it, it sure felt like it, but no, nah, they, you know, they answered the bell, just held the Browns to field goals and, you know, sure. They got that touchdown at the you know end of the game, but you know, it's garbage time. You know, they're almost mentally checked out at that point, but no, nah, they, they got after Baker a whole lot and they only registered two sacks in the day, but the amount of pressures, the amount of incomplete passes they forced with Mayfield. I mean, he number one overall pick looked like a lost guy out there. And yeah, you know, we saw the plays where, 
uh, you know, Baker's, you know, true greatness came out and, you know, he spun around a couple of 